Ah, uh, don't compare me to Teda no Fuji. He's a different league, is one of Uda's frequent sayings. But today we simply had to compare. Sumo had to let us compare, for nobody is coming to watch. And in a desperate yet doomed attempt to boost the crowd, it ripped up ranking order to give us this Battle of the Comeback Kings. For those of us heavily invested in both their comebacks, it was pretty much a dream bout, which could have taken place in Division 4 as recently as November 2018. And for this channel especially, it's a huge moment. We followed Teda no Fuji from more of a distance, with astonishing closeness at key moments. But we have followed Uda closely all the way from his lowest ebb. At this party, not knowing when he'd compete, to the day when the specialist in Yokkaichi cleared him to return, to the times when he won Division 5, Yay! regained salaried status, won Division 2, and beat Sanyaku level Meisei on his top flight return. Two years ago, our select group of fans urged him to dream of fighting the Yokozuna again. Today, at breakneck speed, did that dream become real. Some of those fans united in the arena today to discuss how Uda could possibly win this match. No. No. Good lord, no. We figured, perhaps as you did, that he needed to stay off center right from the initial charge and avoid the usual mid-bout standoffs. Keep away from Teru's outside left, and hit diagonally from the other side, even though that's not his preference. We wondered whether Teru's knees could be exploited with a leg pull, but doubted its efficacy against a man so large. Therefore, no waiting around, let's see what Uda actually did. This looks a surprisingly straight Tachiai until we see the pronounced sideways step of his right foot. He's playing his regular game and chancing a run around Teru's left. You can see the plan. Drag the neck leftwards and dart right. But, gotcha, says the Yokozuna, almost snapping off his arm. A quick Ali shuffle sees Uda try to slip away before tugging at the leg. A scenario Teru has clearly practiced with stablemate Tetsuyoshi 
and merely pulls up the armpit. This is not the glare off Uda wants, and he's keen to get things moving, but totally reliant on that one idea, which Teru rather likes. Uda then confirms he cannot shift his foe from the front, then amazingly toys with the overhead throw before sense prevails. He takes the belt inside right to buy time, but now runs the risk of being seized over the top. When that indeed happens, the audience loudly tell him it's curtains, even if he can limbo dance. When the crowd's collective sigh went up, I got so down, Uda confessed, because I still thought I could make something work. But looking back now, I feel happy that they sighed because it shows how many people were rooting for me. I also felt that Yokozuna saw me as a worthy opponent. I tried all kinds of things on him, but uh, nothing worked. I knew he'd throw various things at me and just watch them all carefully, said the Yokozuna. And in the end, I felt I won with strength to spare. And it was great that we could headline the bill as two guys who have overcome the same type of injury, and with a shared love of weightlifting which we've spoken about several times. Teru remains on course to follow Kiseno Sato in winning his first tournament at Yokozuna. That's not to say there aren't other contenders though. Onosho followed up defeat of Miyogiryu by knocking fellow title rival Endo asunder after repelling a feeble move for the frontal right. And Miyogiryu actually put yesterday's setback aside to destroy high-flying Okinomi. Effective over exciting, and genial in what he does from the front. Chionokuni did his utmost to keep pace in this classic with Hidenomi, to the point he almost fainted. But some truly excellent use of scoop and clamp allowed Hide to fashion the inside right and defeat him for the first time at this level. Elsewhere, we saw Horshoryu glower at sidestepping Kiribayama, Terutsuyoshi try for MMA, and Chiyotairyu nastily cut by Kagayaki. And we didn't see Kotonowaka, who was pulled out with meniscal and ligament damage in the left knee, and thereby loses his career high rank. A blessed Takayasu, though, picked up a second default win in six days. My apologies in advance for not being here tomorrow, but it goes without saying that I look forward to Thursday.